to the Action Podcast. Here's your host, my dad. So in our last episode, we discussed the struggles of marriage with a couple that found restoration through counseling and their faith. And they have since reconciled their issues and their relationship. It was an amazing story of how two people learned to forgive and strengthen their marriage after many issues that for all intents and purposes could have ended their marriage and probably should have. Well, today we talk with the therapist that worked with this couple and came alongside of them during the darkest hours of their relationship. I mentioned in this episode, but I also want to make it clear um, that the couple has given us permission to use their story and permission for our guests to share from the clinical side um, their story as well. Please welcome to the show a colleague of mine, licensed professional counselor, Mike Snodgrass. Yeah, so uh, I think it has been, what, five years now since I've been at Emerge, and I I counsel all populations with the exception of younger children. I feel like Emerge does a really good job as far as how many clinicians they have as far as for younger children. So mm-hmm. I tended to focus upon uh, adult men, um, marriage, you know, marriage and family and those types of things, and then I have a just a heart for, for working with people. Um, I graduated from college with a history major and started to try to get a history job or a a social studies job doing like secondary middle school and high school um, teaching, but never could get anything full time. So I made a roundabout way to get back into trying to at the time what I thought was trying to get back into schools and I was school counseling. And I did one semester, I think now actually not semester, I did one class. Mm -hmm. And I think the first part of that program that where I was and I was like, nope, that's not what I want to do. I just did not want to be employed by a school. Um, nothing against school counselors, uh, at least for for where I was located and, and the area where I, which I live. It tended not to be what I was looking for. Um, school counselors were more for clerical, administrative, those types of things. So I quickly pivoted to the clinical side of it and um, found my way eventually to being an intern and then doing both my internship, um, you know, and practicum at, at Emerge. And, and all the while I felt to some degree um, from an early age, back from my teenage years, in some way uh, calling into ministry mm-hmm. and just um, I've always had that heart for people, heart for kids, students. Um, and at the time, which I thought was, you know, my ability to get back into schools with school counseling, and it kind of pivoted to working really with, um, you know, a, a broader population and serving populations. I found myself at Emerge, and uh, you know, I've always known about Emerge growing up. Uh, our church was pretty um, associated with it. They were our pastor at the time was, I think, on the original board. Um, wow. and so, yeah, so it was, so there's a lot of connections. Um, I had never personally had anything, you know, I've never been a client at Emerge growing up or anything like that, but I always, I always knew who Emerge was and what it was and never thought like that I would, uh, number one, be a uh, clinical mental health counselor, but, but at the same time, never work there. Mm-hmm. So it was pretty remarkable, um, time and just kind of walking in obedience. And and so thankful because I think I feel where God, God has me and I'm content in that, but I'm also not satisfied. I I've repeatedly have said to people uh, in my time at Emerge and that I do feel like a fish out of water. I'm not, I'm not clinically minded in that way. Not to say that I'm not trained or not. um, I I do what I need to do and I do what I do for my clients um, Mm -hmm. clinically speaking, but that's just not where my heart is. And, and so I have, I've always kind of felt like this tension and wrestling with who am I, how do we integrate uh, faith and Jesus into psychology, into a counseling session? How do I, and I've just never felt um, like this is where my end goal is or where God has me for the long haul in, in this position, let's say. So mm-hmm. I've just, yeah. So I, I I've just been obedient. And, and walking in that and where I feel God has me for this current season um, and just really trying to do my best to, from what God has blessed me with and my personality, 
um, my struggles or my my issues and how I can speak life and Jesus into those, um, you know, into, into my clients, into my, you know, clients that come in and see me and that are searching, that are broken. And mm-hmm. so I come at it probably from more of a pastoral mindset and kind of a heart in that way. Um, and so that's why it's just kind of a cool thing. I think Matt, you probably understand that. Like mm-hmm. in the building, there's like that tension of like, who are we kind of thing, right? Like, are we clinical? Are we pastoral? Like, yeah. And I think it's a good, it's a good thing. <clears throat> it's a good thing as far as trying to figure that out and wrestle with that. Um, yeah. But for me, it's kind of like, okay, God, right? <laughs> like, yeah. where do you have me? And and right now, like I like I said, I feel like this is where uh, God has me in um, well, in this season of ministry. I'll be honest with you, Mike. I think you missed the boat because as I'm listening to you speak, I feel like you um, have a voice for radio. I mean, you're, you're the timbre in your voice right now. I'm like, maybe we've been was, calling all together. <laughs> I'll be honest. There was a time. So I had gone to, so this is a couple of years ago. My brother and I went down to Myrtle beach for a golf thing. Um, he was, it was with a bunch of his college buddies and I just tagged along. And one of them, I don't know if you're, you know, Sarah Groves. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, her husband, Troy, they all went to school with my brother. And so Troy is real good friends and they're sitting there and Troy is just like this super sarcastic, practical jokester. Like, um, so he's sitting there and he's like, Mike, you ever thought about going back to school for radio? And, and like, we're in this restaurant, it's super loud. And he, and, and like, they're all joking around and they were already joking around with the waitress telling them like, we're in for this dental conference or something like that. And she's like, Oh really? You know? So I don't believe anything Troy says, but Troy's sitting there you're like, Mike, I, I think you should, I really think you should do, you know, radio spots and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, Troy. All right. Whatever. I, I think he's onto something. I mean, is that, <laughs> that, or maybe reading books or something like books, <laughs> audio books or something. I would listen to you talk all day. No wonder you have such a good uh, relationship the- with your clients. I would come just listen to you in your office. <laughs> Let me read from the Bible, right? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> I forget what was it? Morgan Freeman, I think, did or some, somebody. I think I do have an audio, uh, like an audio Bible. It's the New King James, mm-hmm. and it's done, but it's done like an um, kind of a narrative version of it, like the way that yeah. they present it and the way that they. So it's very much. So there's like Richard Dreyfus is uh-huh. one of the the voice. He plays Moses. That's and so every time I see Richard Dreyfus now on like in a movie, I'm just like Moses. Right. I'm like, oh gosh, I can't get this out of my brain. So <laughs> I, I can see it now. The first time numbers was exciting by Mike Snodgrass. <laughs> right. <laughs> let's dive into this. Right. Come on, let's get into it. Oh. It's amazing. Oh, well, it's uh, only really because it's that's a quarter after nine. That's, that's right. Why. It's very early, very early. Um, that, it might my, my voice tends to go up in pitch as the day goes longer. <laughs> well, so. I'm glad I'm glad I got you in the morning then. So, um, Mike, I want to talk a little bit about before we get into um, this is a follow up to our last episode where we had Jeremiah and Crystal on. I want to talk a little bit um, therapist to therapist about marriage counseling and some of your thoughts around um, the need for it, just the um, maybe the, a little bit of background about it, how it works, um, why it works, um, some of your perspective on on the work you've done with couples. In the month of February, we really want to highlight the idea of um, fighting for your marriage, and that was really the kind of the the focus for the last podcast with uh, Jeremiah and Crystal, who were your clients and. Um, just want to get a little bit of an idea of um, your thoughts around marriage counseling, why it works, uh, what people need to be thinking about. Yeah. I tend to feel like marriage counseling, and this is not, maybe I'm wrong or maybe I'm, I'm a bit different than maybe other clinicians, but I tend to always preface when we're doing marriage counseling couples, even premarital, that it's still about the individual. Mm-hmm. It's it's really still about the individual, and it's and it's a it's looking at how my individual things can come into this relationship and play parts in this, and and so I always try to kind of approach it still from that mindset. Um, I think for me, I, I'm very much relational with my clients, uh, and 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 again, every clinician is different, so I approach that with a little bit more desire to build rapport desire to build trust with them, um, with each of them and the understanding of that. Um, and again, maybe that's a little bit more of that pastoral versus clinical side. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but but I look at it as it's really about the individual parts and what we play and and then what we bring into uh, this relationship. And I and I feel like what I try to do is allow. Uh, how do I say it? Just, just kind of allowing there to be exploration of some of those things mm-hmm. and exploration of what those would, could be and, and trying to point those out with, with couples, you know, like I said, even I have some premarital couples right now and it's the same thing. Oftentimes we'll use different like assessments, like preparing and rich mm-hmm. and, you know, we're using those right now. And it's interesting. <laughs> I've actually found right now it, it's kind of, it's kind of worked against me a little bit where we've used that. And that's kind of what we standard our standard use of that assessment for uh, our premarriage and how we have it set up. Mm -hmm. And it's really not, we haven't really dived into it at all because what we have found just because of the the nature of this particular couple uh, of the certain circumstances, we're already diving into, Hey, where does your background, where does your background come in and, and having, um, you know, affecting the current situation. And so I really look at it kind of from that perspective and, and allowing ourselves to explore that with, with some grace and understanding, because I always just point to each of the, you know, of the couple and basically just point and say, like, what are you willing to do? Mm -hmm. You know, number one, are you, are you engaged in this? Cause I think that's ultimately, yep the hardest part is just understanding whether or not like, are you committed to this or is this kind of just for to some degree for show? Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, being committed to it. And then also posing that question of like, what are you willing to do? Because it's really about you taking responsibility for your own stuff and for your part in this, regardless of the situation, regardless of the circumstances of them coming in. And unfortunately I think, you probably have found this too. When we see couples, it's usually on the other side of something big. That's right. Right. Like it's usually trying to put the pieces all back together yeah. as opposed to over here, trying to create health, um, building, growing, you know, doing work, but still doing that almost as preventive maintenance and, and really valuing and taking priority within our marriage so that we don't get to that other side. Wouldn't you love to see, uh, marriages be more preemptive in in that action rather than waiting for the big event. And because I agree with you, I feel like oftentimes when marriages get to my office, and I'm sure yours as well, it's after a crippling event. And, and that crippling event usually isn't something that happened in the moment. It was something that was building for a very long time. It was yeah. lack of communication, um, un- uncommunicated expectations, so on and so forth that led to the event. <laughs> But that was kind of leading me to my, to my next question for you is going, when do you think would be the appropriate time if, 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 a, if a person's listening right now and they're taking in, into um, account their marriage, when do you think it's a good time to seek out counseling? Right now. Yeah. Thank you. I'm <laughs> well, so and, glad and you I said that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean yeah. it like in a joke. Like, when, why wouldn't it be? Yeah. Right? Like, if, if we're thinking, okay, so if I have this... If I have this thing in my life that I value Mm -hmm. and that I love, you know, Mm -hmm. and the components of this relationship of family and children usually, and why why wouldn't I want to engage some of these different, they're not, we're not saying it's easy, but it's just, why wouldn't I want to engage in some of the, the processes of this and, and the ability for um, growth and health and wholeness and, you know, and I, I just even from my life, like, do I look back upon my marriage and and say, did I do all the right thing? No, I haven't. And had I done some different things, could I have avoided some really stupid mistakes and some some things that have caused a lot of hurt? Yeah, absolutely. And so yeah. I'm not in any way, you know, immune to that either. And I think it's just it's really just it's so important for us to consider how just to be honest with ourselves and honest within our, in our marriages of where we're at in that and, and really just allowing and kind of letting pride fall a bit and being humble in that way of just trying to submit 
to the Lord and, and, Mm -hmm. and working through, or even, you know, like, Hey, we feel like we have a good marriage, but you know what? But we can also do better. We can also grow deeper. And it's really at the, it's, it's right now, I would say for anyone listening in that time of, in your marriage, no matter if it's, you know, you're not married yet, you're one year or you're 10 years or 25, 50 years. What, who cares? Like there is still something to be learned and, and God's still wanting to grow and bless and to, and to even challenge marriages, even, you know, even at that 50 year mark. Yeah. And, and cause they're, cause God's not done with you yet. And in, in that way, especially if we are believers and, and that's where we're kind of coming from that mindset of marriage and uh, the union of that and what God has called all of us, regardless of our marital status to being and called us to, to do. So yeah. I think, I think that's a really great idea. And I was, I was hoping when I asked that question, you were going to go in that direction, because I think a lot of times we think of therapy, even on an individual basis, people get to our office when they've exhausted all their resources. It's they've, they, they've gotten <laughs> to the point where they've tried everything. And now it's like, now I've got to go outside of myself. And yeah. now I need a therapist where I, I, I feel like as a therapist, even working on an individual level, like you should have got to me two years before you actually, right. like we exhausted way yeah. too much time. And I, rem- I remember speaking at a, um, uh, a marriage retreat weekend thing. And I, I don't remember who was speaking, but they, um, they really made the, the analogy of like getting ahead of your marital issues and, and maintaining marital uh, maintenance, meaning Mm-hmm. And this really inspired my wife and I um, of doing like a marital retreat once a year, the two yeah. of you reading a book together once a year, maybe checking in with a therapist a couple times a year before we get to the, the you know, the, the floor has fallen out and, and, you know, we're barely hanging on by a thread. So I, I just think I wanted to reiterate that because I think it is so important that marriage is tough. And the reason I wanted to focus on this is I believe, and I've said this a bunch of times on the podcast, is whether, whether your marriage was good, okay, whatever, going into the pandemic, it's not the same in 2022. Everybody's marriage has been hit. And I just think it's a really good time to take a look at that and go, and I'm not trying to say everybody needs to come to our merge. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying be mindful and get ahead and going, maybe we need to reach out to our pastor. Maybe we have um, a mentor in our lives or or a couple in our lives that can be um, speaking into us. Maybe it is a a mental health therapist, you know, but I think it's just not allowing the marriage to start unraveling slowly and then down the road a year or two or three or 10 realizing we don't have much of anything left. Does that resonate right. with you? It does. I like, so as you were saying it, like the word that I typically use with clients and both for individual or couple counseling is intentionality, mm-hmm. like it being intentional. And I feel like most, most of us could probably, if we're honest with ourselves, we find ourselves sometimes in our marriage of not being intentional. Mm-hmm. We just kind of go through the motions and mm-hmm. whether that's because of our jobs or because of kids or whatever. And, and, and it's easy to do. Um, and I don't say it to blame, but it, rather just in all honesty, because I'm, I'm right there. You know, when I say it, I'm speaking to myself, it, it's hard to be intentional yeah. and the need for us to be intentionally working on, ourselves and uh, our marriage and not working on our spouse per se, but, but, but doing our part, you know, what my role is in this, you know, and working on myself and then how that projects towards my spouse can make all the difference. And when I choose to be intentional, good things happen. When I choose to do those things, growth typically happens. Um, Yeah. And it's like you said, it's hard. It's not easy. Super hard. But, but it, but you also, I think, you know, I think for those of us who speak that of ourselves or, or find ourselves that have walked that road a little bit, mm-hmm. see the benefit when we see the growth and we see the health and, and where, you know, really where God wants our marriages to be mm-hmm. and, and always refining that and always growing that. And so, yeah, I just, I, that's why I said when you were, when you were talking, it was kind of the bringing up the word that I like to use and that is being intentional mm-hmm. about our marriage, as opposed to just, we walk through the motions 
Yeah. Cause it, it, it just becomes really redundant sometimes. And it becomes very uh, easy just to kind of sit back, you know, and, and just to kind of let things happen around us as opposed to really engaging it. And that's when bad habits form. That's when unhealthy routine yeah. form. That's when, yeah. you know, the disconnect starts to um, interject itself into the marriage. Mike, from your perspective, what are some of the misconceptions that people have when they come in to therapy for like the first time? It's like the idea of the, them and their spouse coming into marital counseling. What are some misconceptions that you have found? Uh, I know I've, I've got a bunch, but um, things, <laughs> things that you've noticed when you, people come in, you're like, oh, that, that is not what this is. Yeah, I think for right off the bat, I feel like for at least for men. Mm -hmm. men I think feel intimidated or as, as if this is going to be just like, I'm going to just team up with, you know, the, the wife and just completely just blast the husband and right. where this is just going to be the pointing the finger and seeing how much you're doing wrong, you know? <laughs> right. Um, and, and that's certainly, uh, certainly not the case. And, and, and it's never, we always want to, we always want to get to the issues and we always want to get to, understanding what's happening with um, better, I guess, uh, clearer eyes, let's, let's, let's say, mm -hmm. and clear perception of that. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that we're blaming. And that doesn't mean that we're trying to project blame or point the finger and accuse. Uh, and so I think right off the bat, there's always a, a, a defensiveness, yes. typically speaking, mm -hmm. with couples coming in um, one or the other of, uh, of that, that, you know, misconception uh, of what this will be and that who, who I will be or who any clinician I would probably say would be. Yeah. I think it's funny. I, I can always tell usually in the first session who um, called to set the appointment. Right? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And you can tell pretty quickly, okay, you're the one that has um, made all the arrangements for this to happen. Yeah. And I feel like I, I would love, I mean, this is so over the top, but I think it's kind of funny. I would love for the first session when I see a couple coming in to wear a referee's uniform and in the first <laughs> second, have it like be a breakaway one and be like, <laughs> <laughs> I am throwing the flag. I'm not going to be your referee because I think a lot oh, of yeah. times, a lot of times, couples come yeah. in and they're like, "You're going to uh, be the judge and jury of who's yeah. right and wrong in our yeah. marriage, and you're going to help figure this out because she is wrong, and I know she is, and you're going to corroborate that with me, and you're going to let me know, or he is off his rocker, and we need yeah. to understand what the root of the problem is versus what's happening in the minutia on the top." Yeah. And, and I think that's where like right off the bat, and this is where I think just experience comes into play for a clinician. You know, I don't always, you know, here's the thing, like I'm always learning and I'm growing and, and even what my role is. And so do I always do it right? No, no, not necessarily. But like, but like what you said about, you know, that first session and really kind of setting the the boundaries or setting the pace, if you will, I think it's, it's critical. And to some degree, I do the same thing, or at least try to of establishing what this will be and what this will not be. Mm -hmm. And and I'm not here to be the moderator. I'm not here to pick sides even, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's not my job. And, yeah. and I think that's where, and, and again, another misperception of, you know, what, what couples counseling is, is that we come in and, and Mike will, or, you know, Matt will, or whomever will decide for us or, you know, make, make this right for us and yeah. help us to get, and, and, and certainly we want to help couples get better and healthier, right. But it's not because of us though. Like I, that's right. the thing. I, I think that's another misconception. It, it really has nothing to do with me. Right. It doesn't. Right. Right. I feel like there's those moments where it's like, you know, they're, they're, they're feeling like they're coming into the people's court and like judge Judy is going to award a winner of the battle. <laughs> and, and that's not helping yeah. that that's not counseling. You no. know, it's like, I'm, I'm not there to take sides, which, which leads me into, I want to talk a little bit about your journey with Jeremiah and Crystal. And, and for our <laughs> listeners to know, um, Jeremiah and Crystal have um, given us permission to talk about um, their, their um, time at Emerge and also their confidentiality um, they, they've been able to sign over. So we're allowed to talk about them. We don't just get on our podcast and start talking about 
um, clients. <laughs> I want people to be very aware of that, that there is a client confidentiality agreement, but Jeremiah and Crystal have both been uh, open with their story and, and encouraging of Mike sharing from a, a clinician standpoint. So I wanted to put that PSA out there just so uh, people are free to the maybe former clients of mine going, Matt's going to get on the podcast and talk about my life. I would never do that. I don't want to go to Matt. Right. <laughs> I'm never going to get any more clients. I'm never going to go to Matt. <laughs> I'll be all over the uh, Experience Emerge podcast. So, Mike, talk talk to me a little bit about the journey um, with Jeremiah and Crystal, meeting them the first couple of sessions. Yeah, it was um, it was an interesting kind of season because they had just really it was I think if I'm remembering correctly in, in my time with both of them, I kind of started with Jeremiah first, mm-hmm. and they were and he was coming in out of a transfer from a clinician that had retired. Mm-hmm. And had, he had been seen for some, some time. And originally I think it was kind of in the, the auspice of individual counseling. And then it kind of morphed quickly into some marriage counseling as well. So they were kind of have that dual role of individual marriage with this clinician. And so, I, you know, I kind of was thrown into the deep end a little bit right off the bat with them and I had to really quickly try to understand, you know, as much as you can from, you know, just uh, the information that I had in front of me, but also trying to get to know them, right? Mm -hmm. And trying to do that on a fairly quickly basis, just because I I feel like, you know, I don't want to take a whole lot of time to try to just build this relationship. I want to try to make this as effective and as efficient and being a good steward of our time. But so for me, it was kind of, I felt almost like I was kind of thrown into the deep end a little bit uh, with the situation that was kind of presenting in front of me. And So building that relationship, I think, with Jeremiah first and then having uh, Crystal come in on that as well in our sessions, it was, um, to me, it was was quickly evident that something just wasn't right here. Like, it it just, it it, it, was- There's more to the story. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 it was really kind of like where I didn't have, like, as much as I was trying to understand, and we would have- um, you know, we would have some individual sessions uh, throughout our time together for both uh, Jeremiah and Crystal, and then we'll come back as a, as a couple in a session. And so, but it was still just like, there was a lot of like pieces that I was just like, wow, what, what is going on here? And uh, it was, it was probably one of the things that I, I, I feel like we, we understood, or at least I understood right off the bat was that something like you had said earlier, Matt, about couples coming in and kind of having an expectation of the, the, the client or the uh, counselor right? and, and doing that work and moderating and, and deciding, mm-hmm. you know, and being that judge, right. And deciding who is right and who is wrong and who needs to pay and who needs to ask for forgiveness. Right. And, and I, right off the bat, that's what I kind of felt and gathered from Jeremiah and Crystal. Yeah. I, I loved when I was interviewing them and I, I, I just appreciate you as a, as a therapist because you didn't fall into the trappings. And I think they had said in their, the second um, uh, session that you guys had, you were very stoic and just kind of stared at them <laughs> as they were going back and forth and back and forth. And it was funny because of that and because of your um, maybe understanding of not engaging in what I say, engaging in the crazy, they yeah. then aligned against you went home and was like, can you believe that therapist? <laughs> can you believe what he's doing? Which what it- I have to, so I have to speak into that only because I don't remember them ever speaking that to me as far mm-hmm. as how they felt afterwards to the, to the degree in which they felt. Like I knew that they were upset. I knew that like they right. did not like that, Yeah, but I didn't realize to the point of where they were both saying like, Hey, we need to, we need to ditch this guy. <laughs> right. You know, I, I think, it's, I think it's great because I think what happened there is you did not enable the behavior to yeah. continue of going, well, you're wrong and you're wrong. And, and most of the time from my perspective, and um, it's about when you come to marriage counseling, if, if this is anything that anybody listening can walk away from, be prepared to figure out what you need to do not trying to change who your partner is. That that right, to right. me is like one of the biggest 
aspects, when we can get away from, well, if you do this, then that'll make me feel better. And, but, but you need to change. Like we've got to stop the you statements and turn them into I statements and going, you know what? I need to be responsible for this. I need to take care of this. And when two people start doing that, all of a sudden we get some movement and oftentimes I feel like we get stuck and stuck. And I just, I appreciate as they were talking, I, I could tell what you were doing. Um, I could almost picture being in the session and seeing you and, and knowing you and just kind of sitting there going, yeah, I'm just going to be silent because I'm not going to referee this situation. Yeah. I, I, and I also, you know, as I remember, and as I recall the night, it was, I want to say it was probably like a, a, the last session of the evening too, or something. So it was like on a, a <laughs> so my, the nights where I'm there late. So, so, you know, so, so I'm sitting there and, and, uh, and something that gets presented in front of me. And I have to just say, it, it, I felt at that moment, just like, you know what, this might be kind of a little radical. This might not be everybody's, uh, you know, style or, nor do I do that often. Let me just, let me also say that like, that is something that I don't right. normally. And, I, and if I'm really being honest, I don't know if I've done that since, yeah. but, but in that moment, it was almost like, no, like mm-hmm. here, I have two people in front of me that are just absolutely going mm-hmm. crazy and just, and throwing and, and they're just the vitriol. Yeah. And why would I want to step into that? Why, why would I want to engage in that? And even in the sense of like trying to step in the middle of it to try to stop it. No, like, because that sucks me into that. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, suck, sucking you into the chaos. Right. So, that's right. or the crazy, the crazy. So, yeah. and so like in that moment, I made, you know, I made the kind of the determination and I just kind of felt peace at that moment of like, you know what? No. Yeah. I want them to understand and to see how absurd yes. that this is in front of me and how, wow. how just how goofy this looks. And I, here's what happened as it progressed, that pressure, that, that intensity between the two of them just slowly just started to look right. lower and it, it, it crept, you know, slower and became lower. And, and all of a sudden it, I, and I, and I think if I remember when I listened to their, their episode, they, they kind of were almost galvanized together. They said, and I would even yeah. say that in that moment, yeah. because all of a sudden what I had, I had two people sitting in front of me going after each other and then looking at me going, so what do you have to say about that? <laughs> to all right. of a sudden they were looking at each other going, yes. Mike, aren't you going to say something? And, but right. they were, but they were almost kind of like awkwardly laughing too, because it was, I mean, it was like, you want to talk about an awkward session. Yeah. I mean, that was it. Yeah. I think the other thing too, as a therapist, especially early on, I like to observe how they argue. I want to, I want to yeah. see the interactions and sometimes I'll sit back and then they'll look to check with me and they'll see that I'm not engaging because I'm not going right. to be a referee. And then they, they spin up again And oftentimes early on, I'll just kind of allow it to happen because I know it's a percentage of probably what's happening at home. And so I'm very aware that what's happening when nobody's there is probably escalated versus where I'm there. But I want to see some of those things. Um, So talk to me a little bit about, I mean, um, Jeremiah and Crystal had a lot. I mean, the reason I think they were great for the podcast is because the idea where I've been in in session with couples, they're like, there's too much here that we can't get over. There, there's no there's no reconciliation here in this marriage because of what's happened. And then I sit and talk with Jeremiah and Crystal, and I mean, they threw the kitchen sink at at things. And for them to yeah. be able to overcome that, I want people to be able to listen to that podcast and go, you know what, we there's no way we can overcome this. And then listen to to, to their podcast and be able to go, wait a minute. Maybe we can look, there was a point where I think Jeremiah came to you and said that he was struggling with um, uh, some pornography issues and stuff like that. And uh, I think that kind of opened up a door of honesty that needed to be um, uh, focused on and, and brought up in, in session. And talk to me a little bit about that journey and, and, and then really kind of the reveal that, that Crystal then had. Yeah. And I think that's the, the idea of that individual, you know, mm-hmm. like, that's why I say that perspective for me is 
Yeah, even though I have two people in front of me, at, at its core, it's still individual because am I willing to look myself in the mirror and to look at my own stuff and to, to address that and how that's coming into my marriage? And, and that was something that Jeremiah you know, shared with me early on. He had mentioned that he had been seeing that other clinician prior to um, without the knowledge, uh, without Crystal's knowledge, which right. to me, that kind of like, Hey, wait a minute, red flag, hold on. Why? And so right off the bat, like there was automatically, it was evident of a huge issue with like shame and guilt yep. that, that he was struggling with throughout, you know, the, the, you know, his issues with, with pornography. And so, and which, you know what, let's just be honest that most men, if not, gosh, Mm-hmm. Every man struggles to some degree with, you know, purity and temptation and lust. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're not, we're not innocent of that. So, yeah. so for me, I'm like, Hey, look, let's, let's start with that. Let's start with this idea. And, and right off the bat, we saw that there's this huge obstacle that's getting in the way of him connecting to his wife, both internally from himself and that shame and where, where that comes from. And, and, how it keeps us in the, in the dark, if you will. And it perpetuates that sin. And then also from his fear of, well, how is she going to respond and how she's going to react mm-hmm. and, and rightfully so. And so working with him, just trying to build this confidence and, and the understanding of, you know what, one of the best ways to be free and to find freedom in struggles, especially like pornography is to really bring it to the light of Christ and bring it out into the open yep. and, and to be, to some degree, to be exposed and to be revealed in that way. And, and so I've heard it said many times from pastors and that exposure is a gift mm. for, for men. And so, so I just encouraged him to let's, let's start to build. And I think as we were kind of starting that process, we had started to work together as a couple, obviously, and then started to kind of pepper that into our sessions of just, and I never went to that directly. I was always allowing Jeremiah to kind of bring that up, but mm-hmm. building up to a point where he just felt it was the time to, to confess this struggle that he has always had. And for some time, I should say with this to her. And I tell you what, that was probably, you know, the most amazing session that I've ever had with a couple. Wow! Because in the moment of him confessing and then her receiving him yep. in, in grace and love. And then as she had shared with me, not what, what her struggle was per se, but that she had some issues that she wanted to express. Yeah. And when she spoke her confession in that way, I got to be honest, Matt, like I just, I almost was like, uh, what? Like, well, I did not see that coming. And, I can't and, and it was, it was the most amazing thing yeah. to see in that moment where God's grace was so evident and where Jeremiah spoke such lovingness and, and forgiveness preemptively to her statement. Yeah. And then she was receiving him and his brokenness. Mm-hmm. It was so incredible. And that was the night where that had all switched for them. I really do believe because I, I no it was almost like after 10 years of marriage at that point that they met each other for the first time. Yeah. I, I could see it just in, in the way that they were sharing their story. And I'm telling you what, it, I, I appreciate you so much. And, and I appreciate Jeremiah and Crystal because what, what a redemptive story and being a, able to overcome things that I'll tell you, many marriages would not be able to do what they did. And, you know, the thing that I appreciate and I I respect you as a clinician, but um, it it wasn't like you're a magician that, that did something magical that pulled them out of this, you know, hell hole that they were living in. It was you just coming alongside of them, just being a non anxious presence, you know, and allowing them to, um, really be their true selves. And when you find it, all of us just dire to be accepted. And when yeah. if you can accept me with all my junk, well then, you know, then we're going to be okay. And isn't that what Jesus is saying? 
That's isn't that what yeah. Jesus and and we just we we peel away from him going oh I can't tell you how many times clients in my office will be like he'll never accept me and I'm like really because it because in the scriptures it says forgive them for they know not what they do except for you like it mm-hmm. it, it doesn't say that you know he he wants to accept you in all of your dark all of your your yeah. ugly all of the the and and that was a beautiful uh, example that Jeremiah and Crystal were able to have. And um, I think you just did a tremendous job with that, my friend. Yeah. Let me just say it again. It, it wasn't me. Like it, my job and my role is to not do the work for a client mm-hmm. or for a couple. Mm-hmm. My job is to walk with them mm-hmm. and to help kind of navigate that a little bit, Yeah, provide opportunities for that, you know, for that, you know, that moment in that session, provide that opportunity for that to happen. Yeah. But it's their choice and it's their work to walk in that. And it's then not, like you said, not magical pop, but it's God's transformation. And it's through God's grace and forgiveness that as I see that given to me, how can I then, even in my hurt and brokenness, issue and bestow that upon my spouse in that way. Yeah. And it's a hard place to be, but that's exactly what happened that night. I feel, and that's where, I, you know, like as a clinician, I just want to get out of the way of that that's because right. almost like me stepping back in that earlier session with them and not engaging and, and just kind of sitting there going, mm-hmm, yeah, I'm just not saying any, anything. And the awkwardness, it forced them to deal with their stuff. Yeah. And at the same time in that moment, stepping back and just allowing the Holy spirit to work in that moment was, you know, it wasn't me. It was the transformation of the Holy spirit and God's power in that moment. And you're giving them then the ability to start working on things outside of the counseling um, experience. So they're not dependent on you. Like we, we don't want our clients to be dependent on us. Yes. You know, if, if, there are times in session and I'm, I, I know in my mind, I'll go, I have the answer, but if I give you the answer, then you're going to be right. dependent on me to give you the answer in life. And, and oftentimes we have to just kind of help come alongside people so that they can answer the questions and then they can carry that into their, you know, normal life outside of therapy and continue, you know, that, that, that's the goal. You know, yeah. I, keep, I keep saying this and I, I've said it a lot lately, but it's like, my job is to work myself out of a job with you. It's a terrible, right. it's, it's a worst business plan on the planet. Like if you're yeah. starting a business, do not adopt my business plan. It's a terrible <laughs> yeah. idea. But, but in our role, I've told people, it's like, I wish the world wouldn't need me. If, if the world yeah. didn't need me, I know we were on the other side. We, 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 yeah. we would be on the, but I, job security is not a problem in the mental health world, as long as we're on this yeah. side of heaven. But um, it's so good. Any, any other last uh, thoughts, Mike? I, I so much appreciate your time. No, and I, and I think I'm just thankful for, you know, Jeremiah and Crystal's willingness to share their story. And, you know, it's not, it's, it's not about me. It's not about, it's not even about Emerge, really. I mean, I'm thankful for the opportunity that, you know, my job gives me and, and the, the Lord gives me in, in working with people, but it's not about me. It really isn't. And I think if anything I would say about Jeremiah and Crystal is that their, their willingness to engage it themselves, right? To, to work and not have someone do that work for them and depend, be dependent upon, but also really allowing, you know, ownership and taking ownership of their own stuff. So Jeremiah, his struggles mm-hmm. and Crystal, her struggles, and, and then how those come out in the way that I treat and behave to my spouse like that to me is a testament of why counseling works and, and then why, when we're willing to submit and be obedient in that way and really just allowing kind of the, the pride to fall and humble myself and look myself in the mirror and go, man, you know, who am I and what am I doing in my marriage and how can I start to do things differently to make some healthier choices to me, it, it, that's what you see in their story. That's what you see. And then when they're doing that, God's faithful. Mm-hmm. God's faithful to then provide healing mm-hmm. and wholeness and restoration. I mean, it, like like you said, if, if there's any couple listening, listen to their story. Like, yeah, it's there. Why not you then? Yeah, that's right. Why not you? 
That's exactly right. And that's the whole reason we do these podcasts is because I think it shines a light from people thinking that they're on an island. They're the only people that are experiencing this. They're the only people that have infidelity in their marriage. They're the only people that have a husband that uh, has a pornography problem. They're the only people that have been lying, cheating, so on and so forth. Listening to these, my hope in doing this and the reason we launched this whole podcast is for people to listen and go, oh, wait a minute, that's my life. Or those people were able to do something if they can do it maybe i can do it you know it's 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 just it's just reaching out beyond the borders of of our you know office uh walls and being able to connect with people who are listening right mike great job today buddy i i really do i appreciate you and think the world of you thank, thank you so much no, i appreciate on, that on the podcast. thank you i appreciate you and, and your uh and your dedication and your expertise on this side of it and doing things that I'm sure like most of us is would be fumbling through um, on the technical side of it. So, yeah. uh, so I, I appreciate you and, and what you're doing and, and the roles that you're serving uh, here at Emerge as well. Well, that's really good stuff that Mike was able to share uh, today on the podcast. Uh, thanks, Mike, for your time and expertise on marriage counseling. Hopefully these last two episodes have been inspirational, hopeful, and encouraging. You or someone you may know may be struggling in their marriage right now and may benefit from these episodes, so please feel free to share them and give us a comment or a like. It really helps us out. Thank you for listening. Well, until next time, or when our Savior comes, God bless.